Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. So, last year I covered Anima Prime, the manga-inspired RPG that used an unorthodox method of dice pools. While I stand by what I said in that, it was brought to my attention that its creator had posted a series of notes to a potential 1.5 edition of the game. I call it a 1.5 because it's more of a revision than an overhaul. While its initial posting was on the now-defunct Google+, I do have to thank Nautical for pointing me in the direction of an alternate source. Go check him out on Twitter, he's pretty cool. Having gone over what was said, it seems to me that there are two pillars to the suggested revisions. Reworking the combat mechanics to a degree, and adding a skill system. As such, I'll be addressing both accordingly. We'll start with the first pillar, combat reworks. The first two items tie into each other, so I feel I should cover them first. The action pool starting at 6 instead of 10, and the skills starting at 5, 4, and 3, one point higher than normal. I never really had an issue with the pool's size, and while the skill increase is nice, I'd say this is a consequence of the fact that Anima Prime is not a skill-based game in the same way as other RPGs are. In my experience, I used skills as 13th Age style backgrounds in order to broader their usage, as straight skills limit this potential. Barring that, I'd advise doubling the range of skills, but allowing the clear-off benefit to apply when you have a skill checked off at each rank. Next concerns die expenditure. Instead of 1-3 to three die spent on maneuver, it's now 0-2. to two. This means you no longer take a wound when maneuvering on an empty pool. Additionally, you can use up to two action dice to boost a strike or achievement roll. This is a definite improvement since it de-emphasizes playing action dice defensively. I would advise the option of spending boost on two strike or one charge. But what's further demonstrated in this is the rework of Catch Your Breath, which recovers half your action die, plus one for each level in the stamina power, instead of just two. Additionally, Catch Your Breath increases defense by one until the start of your next action. This makes using Catch Your Breath a defensive tactic instead of a stalling one, and in my opinion is a significant improvement. These changes to combat do help speed up encounters and allow for more aggressive tactics instead of defensive ones. The only one I'm neutral on is changing the action pool to 6. I'm not against it, but I don't think it adds a whole lot because the issue I had was recovery and certain powers that felt like they were supposed to be standard. The action die pool wasn't as much of a factor. Recovering it in a timely manner was. The second pillar is an optional skill roll system. Now, I don't personally think there's a need for this since achievements can fill that niche just as well, but in any case, this requires the GM to assign a difficulty from 3 to 6, the PC then rolling a number of die equal to their skill, or two die instead. Any die faces that show the difficulty are treated as successes, with the total successes determining if you succeed and any extra effects to the roll. I've made clear over the years that I'm not the biggest fan of divorced mechanics. To put it another way, I'd rather have a unified type of die rolling than a set of separate, context-sensitive systems. While this skill system is fine on its own and isn't too different from the die roll system in the main game, it's different enough to give me pause. Moreover, I find this system... undercooked. It'd need more expansion to unite it with the die rolling systems within the rest of Anima Prime's sandbox before I'd be willing to sign off on it at my table. Barring that, some kind of effects to make it beyond a series of successes or failures, which could range from adding action dice to the roll like normal maneuvers, making sixes explode, or something to add an element of greater risk. In summary, most of the combat changes fulfill the goal of speeding up encounters without sacrificing tactical options. The change to starting action pool is the only change that I'd consider neutral. The skill system is serviceable, but could use some expansion, and further demonstrates that Anima Prime is not a skill-based RPG. I can't say I'd use all the changes here, but I could see myself using some of them and a couple house rules on it. While these are good changes, I'm still going to give the game a stamp of recommended, because these changes aren't quite enough to move the needle on that front. If you liked Anima Prime, you'll probably enjoy these changes. If you didn't care for Anima Prime, then these changes probably won't win you over. Stay frosty!